Welcome to 3D Planet. I'm Katrina Hobbs. Centuries of war between the Roman, Byzantic and Osmanic empires have left an indelible mark on Turkey's beautiful landscape. Walking between these two world-famous mosques, it's easy to see why so many nations fought to gain control of Istanbul, for a time one of the most powerful cities between Europe and Asia. To enjoy our view of Turkey, remember to wear your 3D glasses whenever the symbol appears on your screen. Turkey is a country with many faces. On the one hand, a high-tech, industrial, cultural melting pot, while on the other hand, dreamy beaches, relaxation and unlimited fun. As a result of history dating back hundreds of centuries, this Mediterranean country offers some of the most fascinating cultural treasures in the world. The world-famous Grand Bazaar in the old city of Istanbul is a feast for the eyes and a treat for the soul. Art and tradition are important factors of everyday life in Turkey. Kilims and carpets are still knotted by hand by the young women of the village. Ephesus is a mysterious village, supposedly the last place the sacred Maria was seen some 2,000 years ago. Where she died, no one knows. Turkey is home to many religions. However, 99% of the population belongs to Islam. The famous church of Hagia Sophia, once one of the most magnificent churches in the world, was in the 15th century transformed by the Turkish people into a mosque. Even today throughout the country, you'll find churches dating back thousands of years among the many protected ruins. Turkey stretches like a bridge between the Asian and the European continents. Our journey begins in Istanbul, a simmering metropolis, the biggest in Europe. Before entering a mosque as a mark of respect, you must first remove your shoes and place a shawl over your hair. I've been invited by the priest of the Eyyub Mosque to a religious service. The young pupils of the Quran read from the Suran, a verse of the Holy Quran. Mahmud Oka is the Imam of the mosque. Turkey is one of the smallest Muslimic countries where a separation between state and religion is practiced. The government places great importance on establishing an open and liberal Islam. Later, Mahmoud Oka will give his blessing to a circumcision ceremony. These five to seven-year-old boys must be circumcised. It's an important part of the Muslim religion. What would you say is the most important belief in the Islamic religion? There are five pillars that form the basis of Islam. Fasting, praying, pilgrimage, alms, and lastly, the shahadeh, which needs to be vocalized. It's a commitment that states there is no God but our God, and Muhammad is his prophet. Istanbul is the only city in the world that lays across two continents, one on the European side and one on the Asian side. The influences from these two very different worlds is apparent here in everyday life. That's also the charm of this city. 
Around 65 million people live in Turkey, and of that, 16 million live in Istanbul. However, in 1923, Ankara was named the capital of Turkey. The square in front of the Yani Mosque is one of the most popular places in Istanbul. There's always something happening here. Street vendors and local fishermen meet and enjoy a little chit-chat. Or they feed the pigeons, which allegedly brings you luck. Istanbul's turbulent history stretches back over two and a half thousand years. It's had over 120 rulers governing the city. By the time of the Osman, the Grand Bazaar was the pivotal centre of trade between Asia and Europe. It was the main marketplace for trading goods, camel drivers and jewellery. In this bazaar, haggling is a must. You shouldn't end up paying more than two-thirds of the asking price. Here you can find simply everything, from Aladdin's lamps to CD players. The bazaar is not just a collection of shops, but an authentic dome-covered city of 200,000 square metres. Kapali Sharsi is one of the biggest markets in the world. And don't miss out on the chai. This is the traditional Turkish tea, enjoyed anywhere, anytime. Excuse me, I'm, I'm trying to find a place that, that they bake bread and they roll it in the middle of the room. Do you know, do you know of a place? Yeah, no. Here? Just up there? Yeah. OK. This way. Thank you. This is not a rare sight in Turkey. People simply dancing and making music on the streets. Here, there's always something to celebrate. I've been invited to watch these ladies make the bread in a very old and traditional way. So let's see how it's done. This bread dish is called gozleme. It's one of Turkey's oldest specialties. The original recipe comes from the Osmanic Empire. In times of poverty, gozleme was a cheap and quick way of feeding the family. The dough is first kneaded, then filled with either spinach, feta cheese, or mincemeat. It's okay? It's hot. Ayya! It's really hot. <laughs> Have you a try? Yeah, <laughs> This is a very quick way of making the bread. It only takes a couple of minutes. And then you can eat it. Oh, it's hot, 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 hot. Mm. Hot but beautiful. Not far from here lies Najil Sokak, the water pipe street. Originally, the idea of the water pipe came from India. The tradition was further developed in Egypt before coming back to Turkey in the 17th century. 
Metin is a water pipe expert. He says you're not to inhale the smoke, but just to puff it like a cigar. For the last few years, the tradition of tobacco smoking with water pipes has become trendy once more with Turkey's young crowd. This is my first experience in a traditional hammam, a place known for its deep ritual cleansing. The Turkish bathhouse is one of the last relics of Osmanic culture. Cleanliness is one of the most important commandments of the Islamic religion. And the hammams help in the ritualistic washing of the believers before a ceremony. A special herb mixture made from mirror, sage oil and other cleansing substances from the Far East benefit and cleanse both body and soul. the densely packed metropolis and travel further along the Mediterranean coast to one of the oldest towns in Turkey, Ephesus. Ephesus was once the capital city of the Roman province of Asia. In 1863, architect John Turtle Wood began his search of Artemisian, the sunken temple and one of the seven wonders of the world. However, the legendary temple to this day remains sunken. toilets of the city were also here. They were, interestingly enough, an important area for business deals. Here the deals were ironed out and sealed with a handshake. The famous library of Ephesus is also a tomb for many of the VIPs the antiquity served. Here lies Princess Azeno, sister of Cleopatra, the restoration of this 1800-year-old library only began in 1978. Just two hours by car and we arrive in Bodrum, a beautiful holiday destination. The small fishing village transforms itself every year into an exclusive holiday resort for the discerning traveller. Even though it has such an influx of tourists, Bodrum has successfully retained its individuality. The beaches are relatively small, so if you're a fan of sunbathing, it's recommended you take one of the numerous boats out to one of the secluded bays. Yachting fans have long enjoyed Bodrum's ideal sailing conditions. Luxurious yachts can be rented here, including a skipper, at affordable prices.
Well, it's 6 a.m. and we're on our way to experience paragliding. Almost 2,000 meters through the narrow climbing tracks. And now this, a flat tire. A great start. Just as well we've come prepared. A little bit more than. The takeoff point is around 2,000 meters high, the highest mountain in Fetier. This is heaven for paragliding fans. But as a beginner, it's essential to go on a tandem flight. Crash talks me through the jump. I hope his name's just a coincidence. Just below, you can see the area known as the Sea of the Dead. This area got its name from a myth about a young fisherman's daughter who, unlucky in love, threw herself from the mountain into the bay below. <laughs> For goodness sake, don't take your hands off! Ah! That was the best paraglide. Wow. Thank you. Was it good? You enjoyed your flight? Yeah, I loved it. It was so good. Thank you. <laughs> The areas of Fetier and Dalaman offer fantastic possibilities for the extreme sports fan. The Dalaman River is perfect for novice and expert rafters. The levels of difficulty in this river range from two to four, making for loads of fun and thrills. The rafting experience lasts for around four hours, covering a distance of 13 kilometers. Your professional guide is always on hand to talk you through the trickier rapids. Between three and four hours east of Dalaman lies the town of Side. Side was once one of the wealthiest cities in ancient times. In the second and third centuries AD, this small harbourside town experienced bloodthirsty battles during the slave trade. However, many of the monuments and statues from this period are still in very good condition. They can be seen everywhere from the parks to the open air museums. These deities and memorials are remnants to the rich history of the high priestesses of the ancients. Apollo, protector of the sea and ships, is thought to have once lived in this temple. The Agora Terme, an ancient bathing establishment, is today an archaeological museum. 
As recently as 1960, the bathhouse was adapted to house the museum. This museum is full of records from the ancient city of Side. Here you'll find embossed weapons and inscriptions revealing times of war and hardship. Statues of the Greek gods such as Hermes, Athena and the three goddesses can also be found in this museum. Heading northeast, about 800 kilometers inland, we arrive at the city of Cappadocia, one of the most extraordinary landscapes in the world. Hot air ballooning is without a doubt the best way to see this area. This entire area is called Cappadocia, but just behind me here is Pigeon Valley. Through millions of years of volcanic activity, Cappadocia has been covered in a film of lava, ash and silt. This has caused the very unusual landscape formations, which used to be inhabited by people thousands of years ago. In the small village of Avanos lives Galip, Turkey's most famous potter. Hello, you must be Galip. Yes. Hi, I'm Katrina. Memnun oldu. Hoş geldin. You're welcome. Yeah. Oh my goodness, even more. Galip is a fifth generation potter. He produces and finishes all of these unique artworks within the gallery itself. Galip, I've heard about a very special area within the gallery. Can you show yes. me that? Yes, very, very nice. Yeah? Yeah. Galip has the largest hair collection in the world. He's been collecting hair from women for the last 23 years. When he began, he was in love with a girl from Holland. And when she left, she gave him a lock of her hair as a way for him to remember her. Today, it's very rare for a female visitor not to leave a small lock of hair behind. And that goes for me too. Pottery is a learned art, and very quickly, Gallup proves that practice makes perfect. Oh, no, I'm <laughs> Now, slowly, it's becoming something. In the area of Cappadocia, time really does seem to stand still. The life of the people here is simple, but very content. In total, there are six large regions here. However, the people still prefer to live in caverns or within the ruins. These are the places that can withstand earthquakes. The people of Gorame, Avanos and Nevshi here make their living from agriculture and from livestock. In the villages, they've also developed their crafting skills. Here you'll find hand-knotted carpets and pottery on sale, and possibly the odd stray tourist. The hotels here are simple but comfortable, and to complement the excellent Antolian cuisine, there is a wonderful selection of wine to choose from.
until recently, many of these protected mountain caverns were still inhabited. Nowadays, though, many Cappadocian live in normal houses with electricity and water. from the caverns of Gorame lies the small village of Sariam, where an old mystical tradition still exists. The dance of the dervishes, a form of meditation, is practiced by the Islamic people. The fraternity of the dervishes was founded by the scholar Mevlana in the year 1207. Mevlana developed the dance so that he could visually express his love for God. This dance is filled with symbols and messages. Within this self-induced trance, the dancers don't become dizzy or disorientated. They dance often for hours on end, immersed in God's love. The journey through Turkey has come to an end. This is a country filled with mystery, and we've only just scratched the surface. I hope you've enjoyed our adventures, and we'll see you soon on the next 3D Planet.